Morning everybody, been a while since I've done one of these videos, but um, I am on my way across the country again this year, but this time totally for fun. I'm headed to Nevada to do some trial bike collecting, but couldn't pass up on an opportunity to stop off in Texas again and uh, do some ammonite collecting and see what else I can get into. So that's what I'm doing here right now. And uh, it's a beautiful morning, got the sun rising behind me full moon out in the sky ahead of me there and let's go see if we can find some stuff random boat sitting in the grass not in the water which is kind of where i would have expected to find a boat so you don't have to walk very far to find stuff like this so this is one of these big Ammonites sitting here. This one's broken up. I don't think it's complete. Nah. But this is just littered with these pieces. I mean, you could fill an entire backpack up just with pieces of ammonites laying around here. Here's an ammonite here. Looks complete. I'll have to see if I can get it out of here. But last time I was here, People comment in the video that I hadn't mentioned anything about echinoids. So I'm going to see if I can find some of those while I'm here as well. It's just able to pop that one out. That's super exciting there. I got a, a couple of the little knobs there I'll have to put back on there, but that came out pretty good. There's another one just a little too late for. Hopefully that means somebody collected that one. It'd be a shame to have them just washed away and busted up by the waves like so much of this stuff here's the negative of one here here's a little segment of another one that was preserved I've, I've noticed i mean i'm no expert i haven't been here that many times but it seems like in these upper layers you have a lot less that are complete a lot more that are um broken up but ooh, i see something promising right there so it's got some stuff to check out here that looks ammonite -y and complete right there. See if I can get that out. So what I'm trying to do here is start from out and away from the fossil and work my way in and around it and under it, removing that matrix. So the fossil actually acts as what they call a stress tensor. It's a flaw in the rock and when stress passes through the rock, it actually can concentrate it on the fossil and break the fossil more often than not when you're trying to extract them. So the idea behind this is to work from a ways away from it, remove the matrix from out and around it, and then try and get you know underneath it or clear stuff on top of fossils and other situations so that you can free that fossil as best you can without breaking it. Doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. Just pop this one, moment of truth. Ooh, that's not bad. I'll take that. Take that all day. That's awesome. I was just about to say that both my fans are going to be disappointed since I haven't found an echinoid yet. And then I look down and... Here we go. There's one right there. Just got to get it out. It's a little crushed. But it is one. It counts. So I beat the crap out of myself yesterday pulling out a couple of these and uh, don't really know if I want to do that two days in a row. My hands are all busted up. But um, then I saw this thing sitting there. It looks pretty nice and you can see it's already, it's been here for quite a while. It's getting worn by the waves. It looks like it's, you know, going to be largely complete. It wouldn't take as much, I don't think, to get it out. Um, I think I'm going to go for it. But that's also what I thought about the one I did yesterday. It turned out to be a bear. It took me like an hour and a half. So I think I'll go for it though and see what happens. One eternity later. Well, I got it out. Um, which is awesome. But there was a crack. Took off that side. And it's in that block over there. Which you can't break out off here in the field. She means I have to pack two giant rocks back to the truck like I did yesterday, which kind of sucks, but oh well, what are you going to do? Such is life, because that's pretty cool looking. 
well, I got my bag all packed up. Man, it feels heavy. So, luckily I have a shorter pack out than I did last time. And hopefully a little less weight. I'm not really sure, but I might mosey around up in front of me here a little bit, look around. But then I'm going to get on the road because I'm headed to New Mexico next. And going there to see if I can find some ammonites before I end up in Nevada. Oh, it's so heavy. I feel like it weighs as much as it did yesterday, even though there's less in it. Maybe I'm just getting old and tired. But here we go. I gotta get all the way to like where that tower looking thingy is. It's a long ways. Some, some people had asked for some prep videos, so I think, you know, a little bit less out in the field for this video and a little bit more in the lab. Um, trying to prep some of these ammonites out and some of the other stuff I get. So stay tuned for that. See you in a bit. So when it comes to preparing these, I've found that the side of the ammonite that's facing down seems to have the better preservation. Um, sometimes you can even find encrusters and things like that on the shells of the other side, but I think they're exposed so they probably get worn possibly before they're fossilized and then those sides that are facing up to sometimes get the rock stripped off of them and worked over so i tend to um flip these so that the downside is up and prepare that side so what i'm going to do here is remove this block of matrix here off there and then i'll work my way around the inner world there as far as the inner worlds go chase that as far as they're preserved and then clean it up there at the end so that's what i'm going to have a go at here okay i didn't record a whole lot of this just because it's rather tedious monotonous work and very much the same over and over just for hours and hours but i'm using the t-rex air scribe made by zoic paleotech it's a company out of the uk and i'm operating at about 45 psi on this air scribe and that does a pretty good job of chewing through this limestone it, it is a chalky limestone so it's a little bit softer but there are some more mineralized parts that get pretty hard but this does a good job of working through it so there's a lot of removal of the overburden and then carefully working your way around the actual like matrix fossil contact trying to get down through those inner worlds but if you do that you can see that the results are actually pretty stunning here and you can see on some of these ammonites that I've finished here how it how the results final results look there and how the prep work came out there so hope you enjoyed that little bit there <laughs>
for tonight before heading to um, Nevada tomorrow. So that's the uh, that's the plan. And right now I'm absolutely starving. So I think um, I'm probably gonna pack up everything here, get out of here, find some food, and get back on the road again. <laughs> So I just made yet another stop for Ammonites on what is supposed to be a trilobite trip. But I realized I was headed to a place I'd been before in southern Utah. I was going to head right past it. So I thought, oh, I got time. I'll stop there and see what I can find. Spent a little bit of time breaking open one concretion and then moved on to another one and found this. So here's a heteromorph. Ammonite. Allicreoceros. And it's split in half here, so I'll have to glue this back together and then prep down to it. But that's a great way to start the morning right there with one of my favorite heteromorph ammonites. See what else I can find. Hey, I've been digging around for a bit and got what might be some cool stuff. I think this thing right here might be the edge of a Warthoceros. Um, I'm going to have to see if I can extract it back in the lab to find out for sure. But that would be really exciting because those are really rare. Um, I think that that's the edge of an Allicreoceros. I'm not sure though. It could just be a broken, you know, Baculites type thing. Um, but that's going back with me. And then here, it's got a good break on. And, and this is a orthocone, but you can see it's got that maple brown color. So I thought I might mess around with that and just see if I can... Um, get that like polished and shined up nice and looking pretty cool there so i'm going to give a give that a go so if i bring that home and then just broke this open so there's a big snail right there and there's an alley creoceros right below it there so that one's coming home with me as well so good good spot right here that i found there's a number of uh concretions around here that seem to be fossiliferous so i'm gonna stick here for a bit it's getting a little cloudy, which has me a little bit worried because I got to drive across a uh, river in order to get out of here, but I don't think it's supposed to rain, but we'll see. So that's new. That wasn't like that when I was here earlier this year. So it looks like that just came down quite recently. Looks like you can go out and around it there. But yeah, that's a little nerve wracking. I also just noticed this big thick conglomerate that's right here at the top of that of that outcrop that's pretty cool and you can see it on the tops of these boulders that have fallen down here that's pretty neat I think that's that big place to see unconformity right there so I'm sure it has something to do with that after all that, I finally made it to Utah, Nevada in the Great Basin to do some trilobite collecting. I do have to say that these spots are highly secret um, in terms of the person that I went out there with and I promised I wouldn't disclose any of those places where it went. So there's no video of me collecting in the area, but I did want to get into some of the prep work I did um, preparing these fossils, cleaning all the matrix off them, and trying to make them look as nice as I can with my limited talent. So let's get into that. So the equipment that I'm using here is a Vanneman Pro Blast and I have two different types of blasting media that I'm using. One is aluminum oxide which is actually quite hard. It's got a Mohs hardness of 9 and I use that to actually cut down through the matrix to get down closer to the fossil but you got to be really careful because it's so tough you can really explode a lot of fossils if you hit it with that stuff. So once I get a lot of that matrix removed, 
with the blasting, I'll switch over to a much softer dolomite powder, which has a Mohs hardness of around like three and a half or something like that. So it's a lot softer. You can get into fine detail on these things without having to worry about breaking the fossils. Now, I will say that I am a definite novice at this stuff. I've never done fossil prep like this until I started on these fossils. And what's interesting about these is that these are Elrathia king eye and as a fiscus wheeler eye from the wheeler shale in the in the great basin they are very very mineralized so they're very very hard they're very very resistant to weathering and in this case that weathering being the blasting here that we're doing with um with this air abrasive so they're a good one for me to learn and start on because i don't have to worry too much about ruining the fossils by overdoing it with uh, with the air abrasive. So here, you know, you can see I'm using a soft dolomite powder on here. It's operating at about 30 psi, and that's good enough to remove the, this matrix, this sort of shaley matrix there, and get get at the at the fossils itself here. This was actually the very first fossil trilobite that I found at this area, so it kind of set the bar pretty high for the rest of the day when this was the first popped out on probably like my second split of rock there probably second or third but it was the first one that actually had had a fossil on it there so it ended up being an epic just banner trip there i found a lot of really rare stuff as well and hope to show some of that stuff later but at least for now here you can see the final products of these things and this is what they look like when they're all cleaned up and um, i'm pretty happy with them i built a nice display shelf and everything for them so anyways i hope you enjoyed this uh if you did go ahead and give it a like i'd appreciate it and if you want to subscribe to the channel to see more of this type of stuff um and some of the science work i do that'd be awesome too anyways thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next video